waters of the English Channel. Pretty cool. Welcome aboard what is the fastest selling oyster of all time. 16 sold off plan. This is the 595. We are 20 miles or so out in the English Channel off the Dorset coast, ripping it along around nine and a half knots. This is gonna be a good fun trial. On the helm here we've had a pretty good day of it actually a really good mix of spell of conditions some flat water sailing upwind and with the kite up reached out to sea and now on the final beat home uh, and we've got a sort of steady 17 to 20 knots through now we've just tucked a couple of couple of furls in the main sail to keep it a bit more comfortable you can see we're still absolutely powered up leeward rail in and it's pretty good fun to to sail. I mean, this is a 30 ton displacement yacht and she is trucking along at nine and a half knots. So it's a pretty good fun sailing experience all in all. An hour left to run. It's been a good old spell on the wheel. But of course, in reality, you're not gonna be out, out there exposed on the wheel. This will be the spot for those on a trade wind passage. Out of the elements under here, lovely jubbly. So why then has this been, or is this such a fast selling boat for Oyster? It's a big yacht, 60 foot, and it's very close in size and style to the very successful 565 which launched a couple of years ago under Oyster's new ownership. It shares the same deck style, very much similar interior layout, just a bit more volume, 14% internal space more. Half a million pounds more, this starts at 2.3 whereas the 565 is, starts at 1.7. So obviously those 16 owners have already signed up really want that extra space. And you can see in this cockpit alone, there is quite a lot of extra, extra space. It's also deemed this 60 foot size, the largest practical size really to owner operate. Now this particular one, we'll sail with our two lovely crew that are on board on the Round the World Oyster Rally. But you can see, and we'll have a look at some of the systems now, how well designed and set up it is for managing the boat shorthanded with the push button systems and the layout that the Oyster has incorporated. to a big yacht like this, being able to own operate it is making sure the systems are easy to control. And that's where Oyster's done a really nice job because everything around the helm pedestal either side is right there for you to use, largely on push buttons as well. So these are your best friends here. You've got your head sail furlers in and out. You've got your main sail furler in and out and the outhaul. You've also got windlass controls as well. So there you've got your sail shape, setting sail, reducing sail, really easy. And they're hydraulic, powerful furlers as well. And then from here, you've got main sheet control here. You have to look after we, to, to let it off, but power button there to trim on. Single point there, it just goes down into that around turning block into this winch. No traveler option, but a powerful vang. And then for the, uh, for the head sails, You've got the primary and secondary winches here with, with buttons for them. 
to hand so it's easy as I say it's easy really to control your, your sails without really needing to leave this helm area and you know it, you are quite exposed back here but you have a sunken well with with wedge soles each side so it feels secure enough when you know certainly when we were in the the punchy stuff yesterday and the, and the bigger seas and the other thing to mention as well is is the control you have under power this like the 565 comes with a retractable bow thruster and offered with a stern thruster as well so with both of those options you really can stick this boat on a very tight berth without any worry and get off it in breeze and i think that would be a lot of concern for for a lot of couples trying to handle a yacht of this size and it takes that worry out of it we've we've tried it it works really well together with having everything on these pedestals it's a system that i think a lot of owners will appreciate again if you saw the 565 you'll know this layout it's very very similar indeed they were co-designed together and it works really well so davits for the dinghy a watertight bulkhead here with the swim platform that folds right down uh, that you can moor against as well and the exterior steps and then underneath central you have a large lazarette filled at the moment with loads of gear including the fenders and the dive bottles and then on the port side you have a gas locker should you have gas bottles this boat doesn't uh, and storage space on the push pit for a life raft as well flush hatches throughout easy access into the actual cockpit area with good grab rails where if you look around the helm pedestals and into the cockpit itself and the lovely push pit seats obviously and then moving forward look how wide these side decks are good feeling of safety nice little tow rail on there including scuppers drain holes and then really neat leads for the Genoa sheets run through here look at that really nicely blended in there so no tripping hazards as well good height grab rail this spray hood's excellent as well plenty of protection underneath it and good visit visibility through it this uh the 595 also has the addition of these outboard sheet leads for a reaching sail as well and yeah you only have the seldon aluminium in mast package as standard with outboard rigging uh, so it's a, it's a pretty clear walkthrough access with inboard sheeting for that 105 percent jib and then yeah just like the 565 a really great flush foredeck area flush hatches nice bit of camber to it actually which you probably won't be able to see here but um and again the use of having these fittings for the Durard vents which will go in in the two larger fittings uh, and the surrounds for them there to protect them we just have a halyard winch on the other side of the mast as well and then moving forward a really useful size sail locker so this has the asymmetric we were flying in there plus all the sheets, plus all the spare warps um, and a spare anchor as well. Space forward for 130 meters, no less, stainless steel chain. And that should keep this 30 ton boat from moving too much at anchor, plus the jet wash system for it as well. And then the wide snub nose bow roll bow sprit and bow, bow roller integrated into that as well and the hydraulic furler they're also i think looking at putting an integrated code zero furler on the end of that as well and final feature to mention on the deck as well is these coach roof windows which open right up for superb ventilation in the saloon a little bit of footage of life at heel so we're sailing nearly upwind at about nine knots. The view through the seascapes. You see a little bit of backwash there. 
because they're not quite flush by the look of it. And also I would add more than that grab rail up there because that is a full stretch for me, five foot ten. And then you've got quite a big gap over to this side before you can reach the side rail here. Can you hear that noise? We just hit 10 knots there. That background noise is the Watton C hydro generator, which is putting in, it's a fixed hydro generator, which sits below, between the keel and the actual prop shaft. And that's now generating, on average we saw yesterday at this speed, 20 amps, which is pretty impressive power generation. They will try and do something about that vibration noise, but I think it's very worthwhile for that sort of power. Anyway, tried and tested setup. You've got this 45 degree angled nav station right where you want it by the companionway. Again, very similar to the 45, although it's, it is a little bit compact with this fixed seat at this angle. Yeah, you know, good desk area. Again, brilliant access to the electronics behind. Same again on this panel. One of the neatest systems on this boat is the electronics layout. It comes from Richard Hadida's digital background and wanting to make it a much more user-friendly package. So this has a C-Zone digital switching system. So yes, you do still have the manual switches for the breakers and the 24 and 230 volts to turn things on and off. You want to turn your anchor lights or your tricolor lights on and off if you do it there. Or it's all on touchscreen, be it here or at the helm pedestals as well. So for example, you can still monitor your tank levels. Um, here you see DC systems, your AC systems, your tank levels. Um, or you, you go into each one individually, battery levels. This one's the generator, so instead of seeing it on a small generator screen such as that, conventionally, there you see your proper RPM loads and that sort of thing when that's on. Uh, as I say, monitor your tanks, but look at this for interior lighting. If you want to just do the whole boat, you can just put it in valet mode, you can put it in night mode, and everything goes off and onto, onto red. You won't see it so well now apart from here. Or you can, if you're leaving the boat, hit it and all the lights in the boat go out. Uh, it's very neat. Um, quite addictive actually when you get used to it. Um, same with the exterior lights, same with the navigation lights. So one, one hit of a button here at helm pedestal, you've turned your navigation lights on. Well, I think one of the biggest areas of appeal of an Oyster and this particular one is the galley format and the aft cabin. It's absolutely superb. There is so much work surface and stowage in this galley. Nice thing about it as well is it's spacious enough, it's practical. It's, you can work at either side on either heel brace yourself against these work surfaces, good fiddled worktops as well, and two people can pass. Well, one, people, one person's working, the other, another person can pass to get through to the aft cabin, and that's where the, that extra size does give you a real benefit. Also, with this, the, the stowage on offer, so you've got a nice maker below here, you've got the bins here, you've got a washer dryer inboard underneath there, you've got the induction hob and oven, you've got a dishwasher, a microwave, domestic size fridge freezer, unit aft there as well. And you know, there's just no shortage of space. Inboard stowage, cutler, cro crockery and cutlery, deep sinks, plenty of heads, head height, headroom, plenty of natural light, good views through a whole window, extractor fan, just really, really nicely done very high quality. I'm not going to open all of the drawers and cupboards, but believe me, there are lots when you consider the raised stowage, the outboard stowage, and these lower drawers and lockers.
Another neat feature is this unnatural flooring from the unnatural flooring company. This is, um, helps protect the floor, so if you drop anything on there, it's good white clean material, works well. And then you walk into here and you understand where the checks are probably signed for the 595. Oyster has long had this winning recipe for aft cabin master suites and this is no exception I mean what a superb area to have super yacht quality on a 60 footer again space feels really accentuated thanks to the amount of natural light obviously the brilliant vertical hull port lights and these escape hatches give you much of that but yeah the lighting is is superb these LED down lights which now are a standard package I'll show you, show you how those lights work throughout the boat but I know it sounds like a small detail but just having the ability to change the mood in the boat very easily with switches right by the bedside where you want them put your night lights on or go back on to full lighting um, indirect lighting all around as well it just works really you sort of have to see it really it, it's it's really very very nicely done so to starboard here you have good sized sofa the huge island berth in the middle with lee cloth around it and you can see the attachment points for those along here and plenty of stowage in those wardrobes cupboards along the port side there uh, more drawers below the berth and inboard as well large mirror there helps accentuate the space again uh, the only thing to point out here is with that small step up there with the bilge line you do lose full standing head right headroom as you move aft into the berth either side but you get this wonderful ensuite as well. So plenty of space in here with a separate, separate shower compartment, glass, glass doors separating it, deep sink. Again, lots of stowage. And if I was being picky, probably have a heated towel around as well because I think you would end up drying, you, drying your wet weather gear in the heads as well. So this semi-raised saloon format, so you see it's a couple of small steps up but there's so much space for the serviceable goods below these floorboards. We'll show you the plumbing, etc. Plus, of course, the deep bilge and sump. Moving forward from the mast, guest accommodation space, two more cabins which share a heads here. So the forward cabin with its own private access into that heads. But superb guest forward cabin here. My favourite feature being this extra long skylight window and hatch above. Great views up onto the jib. Loads of light through that and the hull ports. Uh, so yeah, you have the space to have a cutaways each side of the berth itself. Um, good adequate stowage surrounding it. I, I like these raised lockers with fiddles inside them. See the nice details, you've got the fans, you've got the spotlights, reading lights each side. There's plenty of charging sockets around fiddles to grab hold of or to keep things from falling out of place. Bank of four drawers below the berth and forward of that is the uh, retractable bow thruster. Nice lit lockers and another cup, small couple of lockers in the drawer below there. And so you have your private access into the heads compartment, which again has lots of space in this mirrored locker and below the sink. Nice deep sink area, plenty of light again.
and separate shower compartment. And then opposite is either a Pullman or a very compact double. It's got all our gear in, six people staying on board. It's be a useful crew cabin, which it is at the moment. Uh, as a as a Pullman with two bunks. Yeah, without the top bunk, it'll be a double. Comfortable saloon berth. I can testify to that. Last night, there is a flat screen TV that pops up from behind there. And then another great feature we saw it on the 565. It's a little bit larger on here. Is this workroom, which also works really well as a crew cabin, as it does on this. So. This can be a bunk cabin with two bunks, or like this, you've got all, all this stowage space uh, and a worktop here, which doubles as a bunk, skipper's cabin in this case. And then I will open up the door to the engine room now. Big, thick, insulated panels on this three quarter height engine room door. into this large engine room access. There's the D4 block in the middle. You also have port side access below the galley sink there as well. But it's when you look at the fixtures and fitting the actual size of everything in here, reminds you of the size of this yacht. I mean, look at the water separators here for the gen set and the main engine. Size of the stern gear. And the rake or fuel filters there, nicely mounted, easy to see if there's anything in the fuel. Forward of that is the Cummins Onan genset itself, which you can also get at from below the companionway steps. Absolutely immaculate in here at the moment. So you can see here uh, we've got uh, the toilet, it's got the water maker feed, the freezer feed, all the services come off this side of the manifold. On the port side of the manifold what we've got is we've got the engine raw water feed, the generator raw water feed. Now of course let's say we were yachting along and one side blocks. Well it's not an issue because we can isolate that side and then with this valve here we literally open that and now it connects the whole thing together and therefore that means that either side can run the entire yacht without a problem in terms of capacity of water feed. Um, it's also really useful when you're servicing the yacht so you know part of routine main maintenance is you'll clean the strainers out so you can isolate that side, not have to shut the yacht down, so if you're at sea, you're motoring at sea, you can close one side, side down, change the strainer, clean it out, run the yacht off the other side and vice versa, so it gives us great redundancy. Oyster has arguably capitalised on a Carpe Diem movement with this 595 with its buyers wanting to seize the day and sail the world. The British brand has seemingly unveiled the right product at the right time, appealing to those seeking an owner-operator size and in the most luxury you can get before entering a custom, crude or super yacht level. The sky's the limit, hey?